I don't know what's the obsession with using um, EDX's, but a lot of them do have this for some reason. Because I guess there's one right way to go. Oh. <laughs> Boy, those are both cycles. Hold on. <laughs> Different. It's interesting that you refer to them as cycles. Like you're saying that, like for example, this one, these algebraic terms just kind of stop. Is that yeah, your that's, idea? That's, that's yeah. what I mean. Because what, what's the issue with cycles? Well, you can't do that because they can't. Like you'll end up with a cycle of cos x and sine x over and over again. Like it doesn't, it, no matter how many times you'd apply it, it doesn't simplify. Yeah. Okay. So I guess that's actually a clue for you to think about. It is possible, by the way. It's an impossible question. <laughs> um, it's a clue for you to think about like, if something cycles, <clears throat> and it's really good that you observe that immediately, right? <clears throat> Does that change how you might approach it? What it means at the very least is that you'll know that it won't get to a point where you will have a situation like this in the sense that it's something that you can just integrate from face value. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't try, right? If you were going to pick one, over the other, which one would you be leaning towards picking? Um, for you, yeah, I lean slightly towards cos x because that actually changes. E to the x doesn't change at all. So it seems like it doesn't really achieve anything if we pick that. Is that what you? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's try. So you use cos x. I'll save you the hassle of the trig <laughs> differentiation, which you love so much. Uh, unless you want to. Um, <clears throat> uh, oh, that one. Uh, that's Negative sine x. Yeah, hardest part actually. <laughs> cos of sine, sine of cos. Yeah, <coughs> differentiation is easy, but then you went integration. It's like a whole last table. It's, it's <laughs> why does it make it so confusing? Okay. Um, this one here, that's fine. Okay, so at this point, you may be wondering, all right, well, what do we do next? Well, let me write this out. So, what, so what are we going to go? VU? Take away the integral of e to the x, or my negative e to the x sine x, so I'm right. And then you can just take out the negative if you'd like. Sure. And as you predicted, we have this problem, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess the question is what next? Well, in the previous one, we tried to apply it again. And it worked. It helped us simplify it to a, a result that was integratable. In this situation, that's not working. But it doesn't mean we can't try. Why don't we try it? We want to give it a go. Then. Let's give it a go. Um, I guess we'll keep with the theme of the true function in mm -hmm. A. So we'll go A equals sine of x. So A dash. Oh, hold on. <laughs> You're right, so. Yeah. A dash is equal to uh, cos of x. Yeah, you did that one pretty quickly. Yeah, because like, again, it's integration, so it's differentiation is fine. Uh, B dash is equal to e to the x, B is equal to e to the x. Okay. Um, is that helping us the question again? Okay. How many times do we want to apply this? Oh, so B U dash, um, B A dash, right? Say again? Yeah, B A dash would be e to the x cos of x and then went back to what we started with. So, let's write it out again. e to the x cos of x is equal to, what did you say? e to the x cos of... Oh, sorry, as in I'm reducing, I'm just changing this expression here right oh, now. Yeah. No. yeah, so I've got e to the x cos of x Plus, and then so instead of this, what am I writing? Um, you're writing a b, so e to the x sine of x. Yep. Wait, what if it minus on? Oh, that's not possible. Um, e to the x sine of x yep. minus um, the integral of e to the x cos of x dx. You didn't put a dx for the start. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. I'm going back. What if, what if we manipulate the equation there? Is that uh, manipulate, what do you mean? I mean like, so, oh, that would just give us two of the same thing. Um, I don't know, I was sort of thinking if we hmm. could cancel out the integral somehow. <laughs> just, we, don't, we don't have to answer the question. <laughs> Interestingly, if you cancel out the integral, 
I don't think you'll find an answer to the integral because you no longer have the integral, which seems like a problem. I don't know. I'm happy to be proven wrong, but that's just my... I don't, I don't see any other direction. <laughs> what was your original idea? Say again. Which original idea? You said that you wanted to, um, to group something or rather. Group something, did I think? Um, I, I was just sort of thinking move yeah. that integral to the left hand side. Okay, let's see what happens. So, let's see what happens on that. Right, okay. so. So you're happy at this point if I remove this bracket, because you actually don't need it. And you're saying, I'm um, almost like an algebraic expression. I'm moving this to the other side to here. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Because I'm just like, I don't, I, I don't know which direction to go, so I'm just trying yeah, to. Yeah, that's fine. Um, hold on. Cos x, no, that's fan on squared, that doesn't work. Okay, because I was thinking you hmm. can factorize e to the x on the right-hand side. On the right-hand side, you want to do that? Oh, we can try it, but I was thinking because cos x plus sine x equals 1. Hmm. Well, squared, yeah. Hold on, wait, that actually does help us. Oh, I, I accidentally reached. Because then you just have that equals to something, and as long as that equals to something, that's yeah. what we want. That's actually the answer. It's in the plain sight. And you'll notice I wrote this one quite differently to the previous ones, right? These previous ones, I typically write just, okay, here's my original question, and I just do the equals down the page like so. But in this particular question, I've kept the original integral there. And that's because if you keep the original integral there, exactly as you realized, you can actually just yeah. <laughs> get a result without having, it's actually easier because you haven't actually had to integrate anything. When you do this, right, can you notice that? All you have to do is, as you said, you rearrange it almost like a variable. And then your final answer will actually be, well, the integral of e to the x cos of x <laughs> is just e to the x on 2 outside of cos of x plus sine of x. How cool is that, right? So the idea is we have a result here without having to actually integrate. The, the cycle thing can help in that way. Then. Exactly, yeah. It will eventually reach. If I picked e to the x for yeah. u, yeah. would we have reached the... Would we have reached that quicker? What do you think? Um, okay. So you said, okay, what if I had picked u as e to the x? So then v u dash would have been um, cos of x e to the x. So we, we might have reached it quicker. Well, I mean, what defines something being quicker? So you're saying that in this situation, maybe if I take it over here, You're saying, is it quicker to pick it the other way? So in this situation, if you do it like this, we have the integral of e to the x cos of x would be equal to uv take away v u dash. V u dash. V. Oh. Oh. Right. Oh, right, because that's what V is. Okay, I see. So. Does that look better? Um, no. No, not really. Then you have to apply it to this we one. We would have never reached it unless we at some point. Because what happens when you apply it again to here? <laughs> Do you like chasing the rabbit hole for all these different possibilities? Uh, or does it confuse you a bit? It confuses me, I still like it though. <laughs> okay, cool. So, I mean, the idea is this, right? The fact that you notice the cyclical thing is really good, and that, that presents a problem. The problem is solved by realizing that because it's actually cyclical, 
that actually is also part of our solution because you'll end up with the original integral that you started with and hence you can just rearrange it like an algebraic expression. One thing I should note though, anytime you have an integral, obviously there should be infinite solutions to that if that's indefinite. So even though technically we haven't had to integrate anything, we should still add a constant at the end because, you know, like it seems strange because in some sense, you know, why are we adding it even though we haven't integrated? Well, because we still need to answer the question here um, that we actually have. Yes, it is. It's an interesting one. Um, that's exercise. Well, that's integration by parts, actually, before I say that.